Hello ladies and gents, welcome to Millennia. This is a relatively new 4X game that just recently came out and it's one I've been really really excited for. But is it good? Let's find out. We're going to jump into a brand new game. Uh, let's do a custom game here. Now one of the things with this game is you have different civilizations but you could effectively make a, all of these civilizations exactly the same. And the only real difference here is that there's going to be some visual differences with the building. But you get to choose what the bonuses for these are. We're going to leave all of these as default, except change all of this to random. Let's have some bunch of random games. That seems fine. We are going to be this guy, but we are going to play as Strat Nation. And for our civilization, we get to choose a bonus. And there's a bunch of bonuses that you could choose from here. Uh, you can start off with an archer unit, scout unit, warband unit, start with additional warfare XP or improvement points, extra innovation, etc. Um, we'll probably go for production. Just having a little bit of extra production early on could be very nice. I think we might go with, let's try like some extra culture. Could be interesting. Let's do some extra culture. I've not done extra culture before. So let's jump into it. We are going to play on, I think, the AI on Adept to start off with while we explore this game. Map types is continents. Map size is medium. That'll be good to start. Alrighty, we are in. We have the city of Canterbury. And uh, we're interesting. We have a coastal start, looks like. We've got some resources here. We've got some grapes. We've got some fishies hanging out over here. We do have uh, some some game and some cotton. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's take our warband here and move out. See what we can find, what else exists in our land. For our first technology, getting up some clay pits for some extra improvement points could be pretty good. Let's get scouting first. This will give us access to a, first, uh, a free scout and allow us to pass through terrain. This will allow us to hopefully find some interesting stuff. Now, how this game's research works is that this is one of the cooler things about the game. Uh, if you re research three of the five technologies, you will unlock the next age and then you research that to progress. And as you move forward, I don't think we can see forward here, but there will be different conditions to go into various different ages. We'll hopefully see that as we're playing, but it's a very cool system. We need to choose something, and having two scouts is not a bad idea. So we'll put one scout to produce as we go forward in that turn. So over on the left here, you can see our research, what we're researching, the amount of culture that we're generating. Remember, we generate some extra culture this time around, and our domain. There's our government and our tribal domain. And as we do various things, we're going to get this... Uh, resource here government points that we'll be able to spend on some of these upgrades so what's happening in our city our city currently needs food but we're meeting that demand and as your cities grow they will have new demands that you will need to meet this can include things like sanitation or electricity various other things which is very nice if you're i i, I actually really like this city this this system where as your city grows you have new demands that need to be met. It's a very cool system. I like that. All right. Just kind of checking out my territory here. We have a bunch of barbarians. We're going to put ourselves to defend here for the minute. Nothing else to do just yet. We're growing in three turns. These barbarians will probably continue to attack us here. Let's go ahead and cross this river. Just explore along the coast. We have a goodie hut. Hello. And since we... We... We did have a bit of combat we generated some warfare xp under our domains and as you get this you'll be able to have different abilities for example to spawn an extra warband we're going to pass through let's see what we get out of this goodie hut trade maps we get some exploration xp or we could get another scout and i like the idea of triple scouts let's go triple scouts looks like we have persia scout over this way We'll be meeting with the Persians fairly soon. These guys have joined up together. I don't like that idea. Let's separate. Let's send our scout out all solo-like. We don't want to stray too far from our homeland. Also, how's our guys doing? They're winning this fight. We'll talk about how the combat works a little bit later. But for the moment, we're winning. That's what matters. We could probably finish them off, but there may be some more barbarians over this way. So we're just going to hold position here. All right, we have enough government XP to get our first pickup. We could get a warband, which I'm not really that interested in. 
put the plus one food. That'll help our city keep growing. We'll just pick that up. And we have enough culture to do a culture power. There's various things that will change over the course of the game uh, as you progress through the ages on things that you can do. But for right here, right now, we'll probably create a town, it feels like. You could place towns inside your city borders or just on the outside. And I like the idea of a town right here in between these two bonus resources. As towns will get a bonus for adjacent resources. You'll see down there it says plus zero adjacency for town adjacent bonuses. We'll get some extra gold when, once we develop these two tiles. Uh, speaking of, we're currently working this tile here. We are currently working this tile for two food and that's it so it might be worth it as soon as we have enough uh improvement points this is how you develop your land you spend improvement points and that's going to hopefully well you use those improvement points to develop the various tiles that you have in, in your your land and create production chains which is another cool system in the game all right we have met persia now i don't know What's the best way to approach the AI in this game when it comes to, like, diplomacy? So let's talk with Persia. Power score is 57. Ours is 56. Opportunist. We're going to propose open borders and see if maybe we can start getting up some, some good resources. There's lots of resources over here that we could possibly use. Might be another good city over this way. Oh, snipe that goodie hut. Mysterious village. Um, plus 10 government XP could be really good here. Let's go ahead and pick that up. We're going to save up for this plus one knowledge next. And nothing else that we can do. We're gonna, we, and we might save up for a quick settler as getting down another city over here. Could be good. I think there's another great city over this way. A really good city somewhere here, maybe. We might do like a three city opener. Open borders has been accepted. We get plus 20 Stratonation diplomatic opinion towards Persia which is great. Could get that plus one improvement, but we're going to save for the knowledge. All right, we have a barb camp here. It is less than ideal. Pick this up. We could spawn another warband. I think that's what we're going to do. And uh, what's the chances of us actually being able to clear this? In any case, we're going to probably want full HP and maybe another warband at some point. I think we're going to explore south. Another scout has popped out. We'll send him north. Have some borders over here. Uh, I think it's time. We can probably go for a town center, giving us some more government XP. Or we can produce a dolmen, which gives us some extra influence and a one-time border expansion. Let's get the town center early on. We're up to two pops. We're currently working these two tiles. We're going to want a bit more food at some point. I haven't really explored over this way. Let's check it out. We take light damage, deal medium damage. I really would like to clear this sooner rather than later. Let's see what happens. Okay. Do that a couple times and hopefully we'll we'll clear that camp. I'm going to bring this warband home. We get to choose a new technology. And this time I think we go for tribal elders. Uh, this will give us access to the council building for more knowledge. Farming is something that we're going to want. But knowledge, good. Maybe if we add our scout in here, it'll help us tear this place down a little bit. Bring this warrior back up. I think that's what we want to do. A little expansion over there. It's 8000 BCE. Beat on these walls a little bit more. All right, we've crushed the walls. Hopefully next turn we can wipe out this camp. We're going to use our culture power. We can raise another army or we can do local reforms. Uh, this will boost regional efficiency. All resources generated for five turns. I mean, it's going to help us progress a bit. We can't create another town uh, because of the size of our city. We can only have one town at the moment. But having another army to defend could be good. I think we're going to um, do local reforms. As this should help give us some extra production, a little bit of extra stuff. We'll select Canterbury. We can go ahead and pick up oral history, giving us plus one knowledge. Let's do that. They did spit out a warband here, but I'm going to clear this, hopefully. Oh, they got their walls back. Okay, never mind. And thankfully, uh, we have cleared that camp. We can take some warfare XP, or we can get exploration XP. Let's start getting up some exploration XP. Now that we have gotten some of the exploration XP, we have a new domain that we can explore. All right, we one-shot those barbarians. That's good. 
what I'll do is I'll take out my scout, send him off. You guys can go back to heal, meet up with you boys, send you through the jungle, get you over this week. All right, we got tribal elders giving us plus one knowledge, or at least the ability to make council building. That'll give us plus one knowledge. And next, we probably want to get farming. We'll have that in one turn. Persia would like an alliance. The time is right for our two nations to sign an alliance. We can't imagine why you wouldn't agree. We're going to accept this alliance. I don't know what that means for us in the long term, but it's actually fine. We can cancel it at any time. It's okay. Not sure how they're able to do that, but we don't know anything about this game. There's farming. Let's get a new technology. We'll probably want to advance into the Age of Bronze and come back for workers at some point. But workers, we don't really need workers too much just yet. Let's get Age of Bronze. Let's move forward. Next, we are meeting our food needs for now. We can probably stop off and get the council building. Our production looks kind of crap. Do we have enough improvement points to get anything? We do. We do. We have grapes and we have cotton. Now, that's uh, one of the cool things about this game is that production chain idea. So let's say we got cotton as we advance through the tech tree we'll be able to turn that cotton into i don't know textiles and that'll also give us improvements uh extra production or wealth or whatever bonus it is it gives or we could get these grapes and eventually turn these grapes into wine for example so it doesn't really matter which we get we're currently working the both of these but maybe we could do a hunting camp this is going to give us more bone uh, let's just let's just develop grapes Let's develop grapes. If we put a farm here, we would need to build a plantation in order to get this up and running, which we don't have enough points for just yet. So we'll save up for that. Now, units do have veterancy. You can see this guy has gotten a bit of a level up and we could promote him to a leader and that will sort of lock him into the leader type for this age and he won't change, but he would give bonuses to these other guys. However, I'm quite happy just leaving these guys currently as warbands. We're not going to go too heavy in the war direction. We did take an attack here. I don't love it. We're just going to walk away, trying to find more stuff. Another barb camp over here. Hopefully nothing spawns. Okay, this is good. We have a landmark over this way. We'll see what that is in just a moment. Send our scout up this way, grab grabbing all the goody huts. Lots of barbarians. We can get that plus five knowledge. That's a lot of knowledge. Or we could get improvement points. And I'm fine just taking five knowledge. That's huge. Actually, kind of big. That'll get us through to the age of bronze. And we have enough points to make that improvement. Doesn't seem to matter which we do. Uh, this will give us two cotton for two extra wealth and, and two food. But I wonder if it's better to maybe make a farm on this scrubland. Because food is really what we want, and we want these cities growing as quickly as possible. So if we were to build a farm here, maybe that would be better. But the wealth is good. Having some extra wealth isn't bad. All right, let's 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 do it like this. Let's just grab the plantation now. And there you go. We're getting some gold out of that and also some grapes. So if we check over here, you can see we have an income of grapes, giving us plus two wealth, two food. One grapes for two wealth. But no change to our food. And I, I really think that maybe getting the farm up to keep our city growing could be good. But we're meeting our food needs, so that's all that really matters. Okay. Let's grab this goody hut. Plus 50 wealth seems pretty good. Or we could add plus 5 production. And I like the idea of having plus 5 production. Plus 1 improvement points seems good. We're going to save up for tribalism giving us some extra innovation and some more culture we'll be there soon uh oh our scout's in a little bit of trouble but we should be able to walk away from these guys just run up to the north so a lot of barbs here a lot of barbs over this way too yeeks so we have an undiscovered landmark over here and our scout has various abilities one of them is discover landmark this will give us some Expiration XP and some Combat XP for our Scout, making him slightly better at his job. And we discovered the Frozen Waste. We can use a Culture Power. We've unlocked the ability to get Eureka, which is an immediate knowledge gain. We'll gain plus 5 knowledge and times 80% Eureka Culture Power bonus. So the next time we, if we use Eureka in this age, we won't get as much. But that's okay because we are soon to leave this age. So we're going to Eureka our way out of this. 
And that's it. Strat Nation moves into the Age of Bronze. We have a new national spirit. Uh, vassals integrate two times faster. Barbarian warlords may appear. Innovation and chaos events may appear. Trade and diplomatic envoys are available. All right. New domains. The diplomacy and engineering national spirit has been unlocked and uh, trade system let's go ahead and enter the age we got to choose a new technology now we could go back and backfill or we could keep pushing forward and i think we'll probably end up going for something like belief here keep getting some knowledge or community we will we'll, we'll, we'll get these things but here you see our first branching timeline so we could do just like before and research three technologies and then research age of iron to move forward uh, along the the usual path of history for example but we have two different ages here that have various conditions in order to trigger them and both of these other ages will also have other technologies or themes abilities that come with them which could be very interesting so the age of heroes will give us the ability to turn scouts into heroes and those heroes can go do quests for experience to get better and do harder quests for more experience and more bon bonuses or we could go into the age of blood in which case all of the world goes to war with each other we're we're gonna probably just go through either an age of heroes if we can swing it or age of iron but i think think let's go for belief as this will give us access to a weaver and it'll be able to turn two wool cotton or flax into two cloth which gives us even more wealth and we already have one tile that we have it will give us cotton if we start working it which we plan to we could spawn a new scout with our expiration powers but since our scouts are getting hit a little bit we can use some of that expiration xp on another ability that the scouts have which is for five expiration XP, we can heal, which uh, will help keep our scouts alive, which is great because we're currently having our scouts getting beaten up by, by the barbs. We're going to keep running. There's a Sahara Desert over here that Japan found. We're going to keep our scout running away. Not a goodie hut to be grabbed. I think if we go here, this barbarian shouldn't be able to attack us. It might be able to attack us. Let's just keep pushing in. Maybe find some defensible terrain. Now we get to choose a national spirit. This will change over the ages, but for the next couple ages, we have to decide if we're going to be seafarers, naturalists, wild hunters, raiders, warriors, um, god king dynasty, and, and these have different fields, let's call them. So there's like engineering or diplomacy. I kind of like the idea of diplomacy. I would like to explore that a little bit. So what does this do for us? If we select this, we'll be able to host the Olympic Games to gain a variety of XP awards. Gain additional event choices based on the number of other nations you have open neg negotiations with. A building that surpasses a lot, suppresses a lot of unrest, also generates culture. Line defense units get a 110% defense. I wonder if that's like, is that 10% bonus? Probably. Upon opening negotiations with two different nations, the Olympic Games event can now generate an additional 300 wealth. That does sound like a lot. Upon opening negotiations with two different nations, the Olympic Games event can now generate an additional 30 knowledge. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and check out Olympic Games. Select that, lock that in. And here we have um, our dip diplomacy options, but also the Olympian options. And this is one of the quirks of the game which I don't know if I love it or not, is this ever-expanding list of currency to spend. And I often forget to spend it. One more turn, we'll grab this. But we are slowly developing. Our production does sort of suck, so we're going to want to look at that. We have met yet another nation. This is Arusha. So let's go talk with Russia. Get open borders if we can. All right, let's get our warriors out there and start cleaning up some of these barbs. Happily, they're not close to my nation. And I would like to get my scouts back together. I think you should be safe there for now. There may be an attack, but our scout has a little bit a little bit more to him. This scout has leveled a bit. He should be fine on this hill. We fortify from this attack. Let's try to find Japan. They have rejected our open borders. So what can we do with diplomacy points? We can integrate vassals. We can spawn envoys. This gives us extra negotiation options, which we might need for Russia. Or we could spawn a merchant, which generates... These are like traders. You put them in other towns, other nations, and they'll, you know, give you money. 
it's about now I think that maybe we could use a second town. Like a second town down here would be amazing. I think we might. Let's spawn a new settler. How's, how's Canterbury doing? We're up to four pops. No demands at the moment. Let's spawn a settler. And we'll send him out. We'll make a town over this way. There are so much resources. Holy crap. Where's the best place to settle? Like right here. We get these three. We can slap down our town here maybe. Or up here. Still trying to find Japan. It looks like they're trying to clear this barb camp, which is good. Our production does sort of suck, though. We might have to get, like, a work camp. But it takes so long to get. Let's get the meeting hall for diplomacy experience. Because we would like to do some a lot with diplomacy. And we said we were going to settle right here, right? I don't believe there are considerations like water adjacency when you settle a city. There's just a bunch of requirements, and that's it. We're going to let Japan do that while we continue to try and scout his lands. You guys continue trying to find barbs to squish. Our scouts are just trying to stay alive. Run them over this way. Another barb camp. I'm a little bit worried for your health. I'm going to top you up. All right, let's get down our city. This will be a new vassal territory. The town of Bristol. And we, don't, we won't have direct control over this until we integrate them. Which is a whole other thing. But we should be able to do that. Integrate vassal through diplomacy. Which would be very nice. We'll allow them to have that. That's fine. We won't try to snipe it. We just want to clear these two barb camps. Uh, let's bring you boys together for safety. New technology. We got our belief system in place. Uh, let's go for possibly mining is something we're going to want. But community. We, but we might just need to get like a logging camp up. Let's get community next. Say here. If we were to say turn this into a forester this will give us logs the extra production that we desperately need here we really want those points we've met japan thankfully let's go ahead and talk with japan get open borders uh, looks like russia is quite hostile towards everybody not a lot we can do about that we don't have access to these until we get an envoy with them so it is what it is Japan doesn't want open borders either We'll take another attack here, bust the walls, and unfortunately not kill them this this turn. But we, we can wipe them out next turn. A lot of barbarians here. We'll probably need to run away. We'll heal you up to full. Wipe out this camp. 100 wealth is a lot, but innovation is also quite good. We'll take the innovation, and the innovation is going to give, give us some extra interesting bonuses once that bar fills up. Seeing quite a move out from, what is that, Egypt? From Persia? Uh, doesn't seem like they're, they're disliking us, actually. I would love to wipe this out. But it looks like Persia's on it, so that's good. Ah, this is a minor nation. We could convince it to become a vassal, and that might not be a bad idea. The question is, when do we want to go up with Olympians, or do we want extra... Like an extra envoy or a vassal. These are the decisions that we're going to have to make. We do have a culture power though. We don't have any outposts. We haven't used local reforms. Let's go ahead and do it because we desperately need it. That'll speed things up here. Choose a new technology. There's community. Unlocks the ability to spend wealth to rush building and unit production. That's really good. We have the mill. We have the kiln. The saw pit. And a crane. Okay. We might pick up shipbuilding. As we do have a coastal city. But officials could be very good. This will also grant us a free envoy. Spend wealth to rush culture seems pretty nice as well. Let's do it. Alright, let's formally get eyes on Japan. Oh, this is Russia. Never mind. Hello, Russia. Nice to meet you. Are you guys actually clearing this? What are you doing? I'm gonna bring our troops home. Looks like they are trying to clear it, which is great. This might be Japan. There's Japan. Okay. So Japan and Russia are like right next to each other. Innovation, Torchbearers. The people of Strat Nation have created a new position within the Hippodrome of Torchbearer. The title can be held by any member of any nation participating in the games. We accept we get plus 2 Diplomacy XP on the Hippodrome. Or we can just get straight 300 wealth. 300 wealth is a lot, but I'm going to take this bonus. 
seems kind of useful. All right, we can get another improvement, and I do think we would like that saw pit. Come over here, hit gather, give us a forester for the extra production, plus this tile is already being worked. I feel much better about that. Finally, they clear that camp. All right, so we have an envoy, and I'm tempted to... Let's send this envoy out over here, and get these guys to sign up with us. To choose a new tech claims a neutral territory tile bordering our region absorbing it into our nation that seems nice bribe an army and a market for diplomacy xp foreign import slots okay um doesn't look like we're going to be able to go for like age of heroes so let's just move forward to age of iron and now that we have a little bit of production we can consider things like the temple for even more knowledge and culture a work camp for a little bit more production and engineering i think we stop off a work camp and we would like a little bit more production so if we were to for example get this saw pit we could turn the logs we would need to convert three logs into lumber i don't think we have three logs if we look over here we've got an log so we would need to absorb these two tiles and then maybe we could do something like that send our envoy over here i don't know if this is just like an instant thing like oh goody hut we'll take the engineering xp yet another resource that we can use public improvements gives us improvement points we'll probably want to do that as we we desperately need improvement points we don't really have anything that's generating engineering xp for us anyway but what would we go for what's what's our what's our pups doing working a plantation working a water tile probably better if we just i don't know turn this scrubland into something you're working this tile we could turn that into a dock but i don't think we need to probably best if we just um did like a hunting camp or something here we're gonna need food as well so maybe it's actually best if we just turn this into a farm although there is something to be said for making this into a hunting camp what can we do here we could make it a farm we could we are going to need a lot <laughs> a lot 35 turns is a long time to grow i think it's probably best if we just can we even make a farm here? We don't have wheat. We need food. All right, I think it's best if we, we work this tile. Let's say we turn that. So let's go ahead and hit the engineering. Give me public improvements. Then we can come over here and hit the hunting camp. That'll give us a little bit more food and a bit of extra wealth. Which is great. We're no longer working that crappy tile over here. Working this. We've brought off our growth down by like half. We have enough points that maybe we can get an improvement. It would be nice to do something with this grassland tile. This guy. Let's build a farm there. That helps our food a little bit. It also gives us that plus one wheat, which we might be able to do something with. Not sure if somebody, I think Persia might be trying to fight these guys. Vassalize minor nations. Go ahead and do that, and that's immediately ours. Wow, okay. Kind of nice. A scout is a little bit under assault here. That's fine. Probably bully these these guys a little bit. Now we can go up with Olympians, host the Olympic Games to gain a variety of XP rewards. Let's go ahead and do that. This seems interesting. We have uh, the tribal. We should have probably done this ages ago. And this is what I mean. I often forget to do these things. Um, but let's go ahead and pick up tribalism and also the plus one improvement. So that'll be all for that. Then we could just focus on government things. Just use some of our expiration XP. Fortify here. 3500 BCE. We are... We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Doing okay. So let's see what this Olympians things is about. Um, We're allied with Persia. Let's talk with them. How, how, how do we host Olympian games? Culture power is available. Host Olympic games. What does this do for us? I don't think we've opened very many negotiations. We might need like envoys for that. So let's hold off and uh, let's save up and spawn out envoys whenever we can. So for the moment, Cutting Edge gives us innovation, which is quite cute. But I think we'll probably... Ooh, even um, Eureka, I don't think we've used yet. And Eureka could be very good. But we don't really need it. I think local reforms just to help us boost our production and, and things could be good. Yeah, I like that idea. Local reforms in here. We'll grow much faster, get our production go going up we could integrate bristol like i think we will that is something we probably would like to do 
It'll take 25 government points. We'll get there fairly soon. Yeah, that all seems great. And that's probably where we're going to end off this first episode. I have no idea how this game is going. Our civilization seems fine. We're not under threat. So that's all good. What, what, what are the victory conditions? How do you win at this game? Uh, I have no idea. We're going to find out. Hopefully. Uh, uh, if there's some kind of a culture victory we can win, we will probably push for that. Or a science victory, one or the other. Not really warfare, because that's just boring for now. But if we do go to war with somebody, it's going to be Russia. I mean, they, they just, they don't seem like the friendly sorts. But all right. Thank you all very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more strategy content. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye.